All right, perfect. Well, I appreciate everybody jumping on this evening to attend this workshop. This is actually one of my uh, favorite topics to speak about. So uh, just to introduce yourself, myself, uh, my name is Polis. I'm the Director of Job Assistance with the People's Resource Center. Also have Jim Cook, uh, who's also gonna be one of our presenters. He is um, one of our job coaches, so he has a lot of experience in this topic as well. So uh, really excited uh, to talk to you about this. So just a couple quick guidelines. Uh, if you wanna go ahead and mute your microphones, that way we don't have any background noise. I know there's a storm coming through. so. Hopefully the, the thunder uh, will not cause additional background noise uh, on my end, but I'm in the city, so it hasn't happened yet. Uh, like I said, if you wanna turn on your video, great. If you wanna keep yourself off video, that's fine too. Um, feel free, if you have any questions, uh, you can use the chat function, just put them in the chat, or you know, if we do remain kind of a smaller group, feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question. Uh, for the best viewing experience, we always suggest the side-by-side -side mode. So you can go to view options, click side-by-side, -side, and that'll give you the, the screen where you can actually see me and then you can see the presentation and, and the stuff that I'm presenting on. So, uh, and everything said in here um, is confidential. We're not gonna take any information you say and try to sell it. Everything in here is uh, kept between uh, the people that attend and view this video. So, and obviously Megan, we really appreciate Wooddale Public Library for having us here this evening. Uh, so a little bit of background about the People's Resource Center, if you've not heard from us. Um, we have two locations, one in Wheaton and one in Westmont. And we offer a variety of different services to uh, people living in DuPage County. So uh, our, our biggest service is our food pantry. Uh, that's what uh, people tend to come to us most for. Uh, right now it's a contactless uh, pickup four times a week, two times in Wheaton and two times in Westmont. Uh, similar to a curbside pickup model. Um, now that'll change um, you know, as we ebb and flow with this whole COVID situation. We'll eventually we'll return back to normal operations uh, with a few tweaks, but um, that is uh, currently available uh, right now curbside model. We have a variety of empowerment services. So we have our adult learning and literacy, our computer training and access, our social services, and of course our job assistance. Um, all of those uh, are currently done uh, virtually through classes. And again, you know, as you know, things improve with COVID, uh, we'll be opening up to um, in-person classes for those as well. Uh, we do have a closed closet. It is currently closed, but I did get word that we are uh, pretty close to reopening that to the public as well. So that's really good information. Uh, I always like to talk a little bit about our computer training program real quick. Um, this is a great opportunity for uh, job assistance. So you hear about the, the job assistance program, and this is a great supplement to it. Uh, we offer uh, clients free of charge a variety of different um, trainings on popular computer software that is used by a lot of employers. So uh, if you're looking to brush up your skills on Microsoft Office or uh, Excel um, or anything else, we offer a certification that's self-paced. Um, we also have Microsoft certification classes. At the end, if you pass your test, you do get a certification. It looks really great on a resume if you're looking for administrative work um, or just, you know, uh, you know, it's a really popular software that a lot of employers work and it's good to know that if you're certified, that's a great thing to put on your resume. So, um, and if at the end, if you guys have any questions about that, I can send you the name of the manager that you can reach out to to um, get involved with that as well. Uh, so a little bit about the job assistance program. So we offer one-to-one uh, -one job coaching and individualized mentoring. Uh, we can help you with a variety of different things in your job search. Uh, we can uh, help connect you with online resources or online job boards. We can uh, you know, coach you through how to answer interview questions. Uh, we can help you with your resume and cover letter. We have a great team that can uh, edit your resume and cover letter and kind of get it up to part and get ready to send out to employers. Uh, we also have a great um, skills assessment skills test uh, where you can take a variety of different tests uh, based on whatever industry or, uh, that you're interested in. And uh, if you get a high score, it's another, it's a, it's a nationally recognized program. So that's something else that you can put on your resume as well. All of this is free of charge to our clients at DuPage County as well. Uh, we also have an online job board um, that is free to clients as well. And I work with a variety of employers throughout DuPage County that send me their, uh, their open, they're open jobs uh, and I put it at the job board and I can connect people uh, directly with the uh, HR employers that I work with. So we're not a job placement agency, um, but I do have a lot of connections in DuPage County with employers. So today we're gonna talk to you about interviews, a perspective from across the desk. So uh, this whole workshop is uh, your chance to learn about how to uh, navigate the interview process with potential employers. Um, so what's the objective objectives for today? So. Uh, after today, we want you to learn how to present yourself as the best candidate. Uh, we want you to learn more about the position and the organization uh, that you're applying for. And obviously, we want you to get, get a job offer. You know, those are your objectives going into this interview. Uh, you know, what's the employer's objective? Uh, 
uh, you know, during this interview, they want to find out who you are, who you are as a person, you know, uh, what are your skills? What are your experiences? What do you have to offer them? Uh, and why you should be hired? Why are you the best candidate? Uh, and how will you be an asset to the organization? So, uh, you know, it's a battle of wits. Uh, you want to know, you want to make sure that you're a good fit for this company and they want to make sure that you're a good fit for them as well. Uh, so a good interviewer, uh, so this is the person that's interviewing you, is going to ask open-ended questions. Uh, they're going to make, uh, you know, they, they don't want to ask you yes or no questions. They want to learn as much about you and your experiences as you can. So uh, they're going to ask you lots of open-ended questions. They're going to want you to tell stories about your past experiences. Um, you know, they're going to be friendly. They're going to be approachable. Uh, nobody wants to go into an interview um, where you know, the person that, that's interviewing you is uh, you know, hostile or um, somebody that's, that you can't connect with. Um, so they're going to be friendly. They're going to be the, a good representation of their company. Uh, and a good interviewer, a manager, an HR person is going to recognize talent when they see it. They're going to know the right questions to ask, uh, and they're going to uh, know the right people coming through the door and, and know what's going to be a good fit for their company. Uh, they're going to have a direct knowledge of the job in question. So you know, the person that's interviewing you for your main interview is going to have a lot of knowledge about uh, the job that you're applying for. So, and sometimes that, that comes ebbs and flows. You know, you could get a, a 30 minute interview with an HR representative that just has a really good knowledge of the company and might not know the specifics about the job that you're applying for, but you might next interview with the manager and that's gonna be the person that you're probably gonna be directly reporting to or somebody that has vast knowledge of the job that you're applying for. Uh, and finally, um, they're gonna be a good conversationalist. Like they, they wanna know uh, all about you and they want to make you feel comfortable in that environment so you feel comfortable and they feel comfortable interviewing you so they're gonna you know they're gonna break the ice they're gonna ask personal questions you know hopefully they'll uh, they'll come in and they'll make you feel really comfortable uh, a good interviewer is not going to ask you questions that you've already put on their resume so um, they're not going to ask you uh, you know well where have you worked before or you know where did you go to school all that stuff they should be getting from your resume um, the overwhelmed hire manager. So, um, especially nowadays, uh, now that jobs are posted online, uh, recruiters and hiring managers are overwhelmed by the volumes of resumes pouring in. So for every job that they post, because it's posted online and anybody can access it all over the country, you know, one job posting might have, you know, anywhere from a hundred people apply for it. And, you know, up to, I know I've, I've heard stories of, you know, over a thousand people applying for one position. Uh, and, and they don't have the bandwidth to, you know, look at all of the resumes coming in uh, to find the, the five or 10 people that, uh, you know, they might want to bring in for a phone screen. So studies suggest that, you know, when somebody's trying to look through these resumes, they spend an average of six seconds reading each resume before they, they, they move on. So they might look at, you know, your experience, seeing if a position that you have is similar to the one that they're hiring for. They might, you know, in some cases, they might look at your, uh, your school, your degree. So, your resume needs to be eye-catching and it needs to pinpoint your exact skills and qualifications so it's easy to see, easy to read, because you know that people aren't going to be spending a lot of time looking over your resumes. Uh, and one thing to note too, and, and this is something I can speak from experience, uh, as I hired a lot of people back in my day. Uh, most of the people that will apply, and this is roughly 75%, but I feel like in my experience it's a lot more, aren't even qualified for the job. They, they don't nearly have the skills or experience needed to be successful in this job. And so it's kind of a waste of time. And it can get very overwhelming for a hiring manager to look through a bunch of resumes and not find anybody uh, that, that's a good fit. Let's see. So employer's biggest concerns, when we're looking to hire somebody, uh, we want to make sure that the, these people are going to be the right fit for our company. Uh, you know, do they, do, does their personality align with the cultures and values of the company? Uh, are they going to be somebody, and this is a huge thing right now, and, and I think we were talking uh, with Catherine about this, like turnover. You know, is this person going to come in, uh, stay for a few months and leave or stay for a year? Uh, and are you going to be constantly rehiring for this position over and over? And that was, you know, my last job. Uh, we hired a lot of entry level, uh, you know, straight out of grad school, and they'd, they'd stay at the job for a year, maybe two years tops. We had about 20 people. Um, 20 line staff in this role. So we were hiring constantly and it was exhausting. Um, so we, we got really uh, particular with our hiring practices and making sure that the people that we were hiring uh, were people that we could count on to stick for into the, the little role for at least two years. You know, they're going to be a performance concern. Uh, that's why it's really important to 
uh, you know, vet, uh, vet candidates on, on their previous ex work experience. You know, you, you can look, you can see a lot on a resume. Is this person, you know, switching jobs? Is there any employment gaps? Like we want to make sure that the, this person coming into the role isn't a potential performance concern. You know, do they have good communication skills? Um, do they show up to the interview on time? Are they clearly able to articulate themselves or present themselves in a positive light? Um, are they dressed appropriately? Uh, do they have the ability to, um, you know, go above and beyond what the, what the job description entails? Because there's always that part in the job description, other duties as assigned. Is somebody going to be flexible uh, and willing to do tasks that potentially are outside of the scope of their job description? Uh, and finally, you know, if, you, if you're the manager doing the interviewing, is you going to make my life easier? Are you going to be somebody I'm going to constantly have to uh, remind to do things? Uh, are you going to be somebody that uh, is, you know, I remember, you know, some of the concerns that I had with some people, I'd be meeting with them for, you know, an hour a day, you know, every day of the week. I mean, it was uh, time consuming. So you know, we're looking for people that are going to make our lives easier. Um, you know, the employer selection process, you know, interviewing is like a chess game. We mentioned that you're vetting them the same time that they're vetting you. Uh, you know, it's not the person with the most assets that wins. You know, we're not, you know, both of you are trying to find a good fit. Um, and it's okay. You know, sometimes if you're interviewing for a job and you don't feel the company aligns with your values, it's okay to walk away from that. <coughs> um, but it's persons that, that use their assets most skillfully that wins. So you want to know what your strengths are and talk, talk about those strengths, but also be able to acknowledge some of the weaknesses that you have uh, and how you can, uh, how you work through some of those things to make you a better employer. Uh, and a lot of times, you know, interviewers um, will pick the employee that, uh, that maybe they really enjoyed interviewing. So there's been lots of times that I've interviewed people and I really just enjoy their personality. They seem like they're a really good fit for the culture of our agency but maybe they don't have all of the skills as, you know, somebody else. So, you know, sometimes, you know, employees are chosen based on their personality, based on their ability to learn, and not necessarily about the person that has the best skills for the job. Now, it doesn't hurt to have the best skills for the job. You should have some when you're applying for the job. You don't want to, you know, I, it's not like I'm going to go and apply to be a doctor. I don't have the skills. Um, but that doesn't mean that the, the most qualified person is always going to get the job automatically. It's about who's the best overall fit and the personality uh, and, and culture fit is a, a, a big thing for that. Um, first impressions. Um, and I'd say this is true. 49% of managers uh, claim to know if a candidate is a good fit within the first five minutes. Sometimes it takes less than that. Uh, I remember sitting in uh, interviews, you know, talking to somebody and they're just, you know, it's always the, the, the tell me about yourself question. And you can just tell uh, within the first few minutes, hey, this person's, you know, this person's got a great personality. They're confident. Uh, they speak well about themselves. Like most of the time, you know uh, that these people are going to be, uh, you know, worth pursuing. Uh, and that's why I always, we're, we're going to talk a lot about like your elevator pitch. Uh, it's really, really critical to have a really strong elevator pitch because I guarantee you, uh, you know, whether it's the, the hiring manager or that 30 minute phone screen where you're talking to the HR person, almost 100% of the time that, that first question is going to be, tell me about yourself. You know, so you have to, you have to be able to deliver a really strong 30, 30 second elevator pitch. Um, now, this is going to be a little bit different um, since I'd say probably some of the interviews are probably still virtually. Uh, you know, it's all really about your body language. Um, so even if you're, you know, even if you're doing a, a an interview over Zoom, uh, you still, you know, want to act like it's in person. So you want to make sure you're, you're dressed appropriately, you're standing up straight, you're talking with confidence, you want to make sure that you're in a well-lit room. You always want to present yourself uh, in the best possible light. So we talked about over here on the left, the, the knockout factors. Um, you know, with, with not being able to present yourself, you know, for the first 30 seconds of your elevator pitch, if, if you're stumbling over your words, if you're not confident, um, if you appear nervous, if you're you know, lacking that self-confidence, if you're not making direct eye contact, um, if you, your first questions out of your mouth are like, what's this, what's this pay or what perks do I get? Uh, you know, there, are a lot of, there are a lot of things that you can say or do over the course of the interview that maybe if they were interested, you know, interested in you, if you, you know, say or do any of these things, it, it could be uh, a pretty quick no uh, on moving forward with the position.
So uh, what to take with you um, when you're going to an interview? I uh, always recommend taking uh, a few extra copies of your resume with you. Uh, sometimes they, uh, you, you might you might think that you're interviewing with you know one person, but then you get to the room, it's a table of five people interviewing you. So it's always good to have a couple extra copies of your resume on hand so you can hand out copies to people that you weren't expecting to be in the room with you. Uh, it's always good to uh, you know, bring some paper and a notepad with you. And I, I you know, always recommend writing your questions down beforehand. So uh, if you have an idea of you know, what you wanna ask the interviewer, uh, you know, usually at the end of the interview, you're exhausted or you know, your cat's got your tongue and you don't know what to say. It's good to have those questions written down so you don't forget to ask the ones that you wanna ask. Um, you can bring a list of references. So usually next step, they're going to ask for a list of uh, character references or previous employment references. So it's good to have that on hand along with your resume that you can hand out too. Uh, copy of your completed application, if, if that's what they have. It's, if it's a handwritten application or you're able to print it out, not the worst thing in the world to have that. Uh, we talked about your questions. Um, I'm sure this is said later on, but you should always ask questions. Uh, during the interview. You know, that's usually the last thing, you know, do you have any questions for us? Uh, it's a big turnoff when the person says, no, I think you answered all, your, all my questions. I guarantee you, I didn't. Like, you should always have questions about the culture, about the company, uh, you know, about the job specifically. You should never say no, no questions. It's a, it's a, it's a big red flag. Um, a small bur a purse, bag, briefcase, if there's anything you need to carry, uh, you know, you can bring that along as well. Finally, a, you know, a smile, you know, we talked about having a positive attitude, uh, you know, coming into the interview, you know, putting yourself in the best possible light, that's important. Uh, you know, leave behind um, your phone uh, or, you know, put that in your purse, make sure it's turned off. I think that's, that's, that's sort of the, the big message here. Uh, you don't want it to go off uh, over the course of the interview and it can be embarrassing and distracting. Um, I know the person that, that, made, uh, that made this PowerPoint, they said, don't bring your own cup of coffee specifically because uh, they did that one time and spilled coffee all over themselves during the interview uh, and they did not get that job. So um, make sure you, uh, you know, if you do, if you bring your, your own water bottle, uh, that's fine. You can tell I have a little bit of a cough and I did not bring my water with me. So uh, that's an error on my part, but you know, in, in case the interview and you do get, you know, a tickle in your throat, uh, it's good to have a water bottle uh, handy so you can uh, get rid of it. So uh, I always say leave behind your political or religious beliefs when you're you know, in an interview. Um, you don't want to get off topic, you know, off topic and you know, talk about, especially nowadays with things as polarized as they are, you don't want to be talking about your political or religious beliefs uh, at all. So those are things you should, those personal things you should leave uh, at home. Uh, so what, is, what, what does the interview want to know about you? Um, we talked about first impressions being critical um, and departure impressions being just as important. So once the interview is done, just don't say thank you and, and uh, you know, walk out. Uh, you want to make sure that you look everybody in the eye. Uh, I'm assuming we can still shake hands. Uh, hopefully that doesn't go away, but you want to make eye contact with everybody, shake their hands, make sure that you thank them for taking the time to interview you. Um, ask them what next steps are. Uh, you know, I think they want to know that uh, you're interested in the job and by asking questions at the end, hey, I'm really interested about this, you know, really enjoyed this interview. I'm really interested in the role. Uh, you know, what are gonna be, what are the next steps? You know, I think it's good to show interest in the role. Um, they want you to answer the questions. Uh, you know, nothing is, is more, uh, we, I think we talk about this a little bit later. You know, nothing is, is more frustrating, I think from an interviewer's perspective is like if you ask a direct question uh, and they kind of beat around the bush or maybe they, uh, pretend like they know the answer to that question, but it's really clear that they don't. Like, you want to make sure that you're answering their questions that they're asking you directly. And if they ask you a question and you're not sure, it's perfectly okay to say, hey, you know, I'm really not sure how to answer that question or I'm, I'm, uh, I'm unsure at this time. Can I get back to you? It's totally fine to do during an interview. Uh, be brief. Uh, less is more. Um, you know, and I feel always say, like, you don't need to you know, you don't need to answer a question and take five minutes. You know, if you can answer all your questions in under, you know, a minute, that's great. So we always talk about like that, that elevator pitch. You know, when they ask you about yourself, like, tell me about yourself, you know, make sure it's, it's 30 seconds long. You don't need to start, you know, from when you were in elementary school all the way to up to where you are now, you know, talking about your entire life. That's not what they're looking for. They just want a brief 30 second synopsis about yourself. Same thing that goes with any scenarios that they're answering. You know, you just want to get direct and to the point, be clear and concise with your answers. You know, 
don't overly on catchphrases and buzzwords. You know, be professional. Uh, you know, when you're answering your questions, try not to use you know overly casual language. I've had somebody that you know cussed in an interview before. You know, I think it was just kind of their personality. And I think it was just because they were. You know, we built some really good rapport at the beginning. They became really comfortable with me, and they I think they mistook me for like you know one of their friends that they were just talking to casually. So. Uh, you know, just make sure that you're cognizant of that and that you're being professional at all times. Um, the interviewer wants you to, to know that you, you're interested in this role by showing that you research the company. So before your interview, you're going to want to, you know, Google the company, look them up online, find out who the CEO is, uh, you know, find out, uh, you know, what other positions are at the company, not just the one that you're applying for. You know, uh, what's the company structure look like? What's the culture look like? You can find a lot of that stuff on their website. And believe me, uh, when I'm interviewing people and, and they talk about how, you know, they talk about things that I know that they found on the website, that shows that they did their homework and that they're very serious about the role. So uh, I think it's really important to uh, research the company beforehand. Uh, we talked about being honest. It's okay not to know something. Uh, and you know, we talked about bringing, bring, bringing authenticity to the interview. You know, they need to know who you are. Uh, they want to see your true self. So uh, you know, just make sure that you're not coming in overly guarded or, or trying to present yourself as, as somebody that you're not. I, I think the the more authentic you are during these interviews, the more laid back and, and the more comfortable you're going to feel and the better you, the better interviewer you're going to be. Uh, evaluation of the candidate. So, um, you know, they're going to evaluate uh, hard. The, what are your hard skills? What are your soft skills? Um, you know, we talked about you know, your education, you know, what is your licenses and certifications, what's your prior work experience, all that stuff, all your hard skills are going to be on your resume. Uh, those are going to be uh, a lot of what they're going to know beforehand. And I think a lot of what this interview is going to be is figuring out your soft skills. You know, what does your resume not represent about you? Your soft skills, are you a good communicator? Um, they're going to ask you questions about, you know, working with, with other people, with coworkers. You know, do you have, does it seem like you have a lot of conflicts with coworkers or do you seem to get along with everybody really well? You know, good customer service skills. You know, are you able to um, work with external clients? Are you able to solve problems for people? Uh, and how have you demonstrated that in your previous work experiences? Those are the type of questions they're going to ask you. Enthusiasm for the role. So we talked about, are you enthusiastic about, you know, working for that company in that particular job? Or are you just enthusiastic because the job pays really well or has really good benefits? So they're going to know how enthusiastic you are about the job. Time management, you know, are you going to be somebody that can manage your time effectively? Can you get to work on time? Can you complete all your tasks, you know, in a seven, seven and a half hour time period? Um, you know, are you somebody that's, you know, going to take a call at seven o'clock at night when you're home? Um, you know, how effective are you at time management? That's a really critical piece. Uh, and personal appearance, you know, are you showing up to an interview, uh, you know, in a suit and tie or uh, in, you know, in interview clothes, or, you know, and I, I used to work for hired people for nonprofit. I had people that showed up in t-shirt and jeans because they thought it was a nonprofit and that we were just a casual work environment, but that shows that they didn't do their research online. Some people you'd be surprised at, and, 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 you know, what types of clothes people show up to interviews. And this says a lot about their personality and, and uh, uh, the research that they've done for the company. So, uh, well, Jim, I think I'm gonna pass it over to you. All right. Thank you, Paul. Uh, let's talk about it's all positive. Uh, the interview, as it says here, is not an opportunity event. What do they mean by that? You know, Paul has referred to it a number of times, being positive. You know, we don't want to talk about getting fired at your last job and that the last position really didn't fit well or my boss didn't like me or, the, you know, that's really not anything that's not germane to the new opportunity and what you're going to bring to that is really something you, you don't even want to get into. Uh, so, you know, losing a job and then being back in the job market is a very emotional time. And we understand that, uh, but that's something that you're going to have to kind of uh, put off to the side and compartmentalize because this 15 or 30 minutes uh, in this interview is really about that opportunity and that company and how you fit, not all the other stuff. And so, Going into an interview with a clear head, without distractions, even giving yourself, you know, enough time prior to the interview so that, you know, you're not rushing from one thing to the other and that you're mentally and physically prepared to, to show your best self is, you know, a strong suggestion. 
Uh, next slide. Body language. Uh, again, with many of the interviews today being virtual, you still need to connect. Smiling. Uh, look at how you look on video. You can put up your phone and practice your, your 30 second pitch and see is the lighting correct? How do I look? You know, practice makes perfect and practice also relieves anxiety and practice makes you look and sound much more professional. Um, so uh, do it, do it often, do it with people and check yourself. Uh, these small tips, first impressions are everything. And again, you're trying to impress somebody in 15 or 20 minutes, you don't wanna give them a reason not to consider you for the next step. Uh, next slide. Uh, how am I doing? Uh, telltale signs. You generally can tell if people are into the interview. Uh, if the interviewer is asking questions and wants more detail and asks you for more detail, those are good signs. If there are a lot of yes and no and very short answers, probably not going that well. Uh, so in the questions, obviously start out broad. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me about your experiences and then start getting narrower and narrower to the actual job responsibilities and duties and your experiences and skills. You know, you know you're kind of drilling down to, to the nitty gritty and the more important things. If the interview is easy, that's a red flag. You know, I've, I've talked to literally dozens of clients, how'd it go? I think it went great. Well, why? Well, I just think it went great. There's nothing specific that they can tie it to. Uh, so if the interview's really, really short, obviously that's a red flag. Uh, you know, if you're not getting a good read, there's nothing wrong with asking. In fact, I just advised a client today. Uh, tell me a little bit about the people that you've interviewed and how you think I fit. There's nothing wrong with taking their temperature. That's a very valid professional way of finding out where you fit. And obviously, if it's not a fit, make good use of your time and move on. Next slide. Let's talk about some probable interview questions. Uh, 95% of them are gonna start out with tell me about yourself. And hopefully we all know at this point, they don't really wanna know about you necessarily. They wanna know about you as it relates to the job description. So that's why it's critical to really, really, really read the job description, the role and what they're looking for and do your homework on the company. And then that tell me about yourself 30 second elevator pitch is really how your background, your experiences and your personality make you a good to great candidate for that position. That's what tell me about yourself is. Um, you know, tell me about you know, why you're looking for a new job. Uh, you always, again, want to spin that positively. You're not, obviously, if you got fired, we know that, but you don't want to say, well, I'm looking for a new job because I got fired from the last one. That's, that, nobody wants to hear that. You're, you know, I was let go from my previous position, but, I'm really positive and looking for new opportunities. I view this as an opportunity for maybe me to do something different or into a different industry. So again, spinning it positively is critical, not only for your own mental psyche, but, but obviously in giving that good and positive impression to the interviewer. Uh, there's gonna be questions that they're asking that are really behavioral type questions. These next couple are kind of like that. You know, Tell me about a time when this happened. Tell me about a time maybe of when you had a boss that was, uh, you know, uh, in your view, not doing a good job. Uh, you know, what have you done to improve your skills? These are, these are questions that you're gonna be, need to be prepared. And I'd strongly suggest you can go on Indeed or online and ask in your specific industry, because you can make them industry specific, uh, top 20 interview questions that you should be prepared for. And generally 75% of the time, Questions that you're going to hear, especially in an interview, first interview, are going to be there. Uh, and I think it's also critical to understand who are you interviewing with. Today, a lot of interviews are done by outside firms, especially when companies are inundated and have a thousand positions, their HR departments are overloaded. So they're relying on outside sources to really narrow down the field. So that person that you're talking to may be an outside recruiter. He or she has a different mindset than a hiring manager. So we're going to talk about that in a minute, but it's you're going to kind of manage these differently and your strategy is a little bit different depending on who you're talking to. So that's really number one, know who you're talking to. Are they a company employee, hiring manager, outside recruiting firm? Keep that in mind and let's go to the next slide. Uh, 
some of these we were already went through. Uh, but I would strongly, strongly suggest looking at the top 20 most commonly asked interview questions and write out answers and practice them. Practice them with yourself, practice them with a friend, a spouse, a whoever. Video yourself. Uh, you will be surprised on sometimes uh, your view when you're not looking at yourself is different than when someone else is looking at you. So do that and you'll be much more successful. Um, let's flip over to the next uh, slide. Uh, why'd you leave your last job? I think the, in red there, it says it all. Be prepared with a brief but honest answer. Nobody wants a two minute dissertation of why you got fired. It's, it's, not, it's not really pertinent to the new job. You know, uh, if it was something that was you know, large like that, you know, I violated company policy, so I was terminated. Or, you know, the position was just not a good fit and we decided to part company and now I'm looking for new opportunities. But have a prepared statement of what your response is going to be, especially if you were terminated or if there was a layoff or whatever the case may be. Uh, but again, spin it to something positive. You know, it was a learning experience. I'm wiser now. Even bad experiences, right, can be a good thing long term because generally people learn more from, you know, tough experiences than, you know, easy experiences. So take that and grow and move on. Um, next slide. Addressing job gaps. Uh, this is more common now. Uh, and so many people are very fearful of that. Uh, again, be honest. You know, I was out of the job market for two years. Uh, you want to be able to fill that time. But I, you know, obviously with COVID, I took care of family members. I had to, you know, my personal health was important. So I took care of that. Again, have some prepared statement that is concise, uh, is honest. You know, make, don't, you don't want to make up stories. And why you're back in the market today and why it's different today and why although over the last two years you've been out of the job market, why you're back in and what your goals are. And I think most employers are looking for people that are thoughtful and prepared and can demonstrate why, again, they're a good candidate and that all goes together. Uh, talk about the activities you did during your downtime. Uh, did you take some classes? Did you get physically healthier? Uh, did you, you know, what did you do with the time? Next slide. Uh, again, questions about your last job. Uh, I think some of these are somewhat redundant. Some of these are star questions, and some of these are, are I don't want to call them trick questions, but they can be trick questions uh, because and employers don't ask these just to be nasty. They ask these because they want to test your analytical thinking. There's a term called STAR, S-T-A-R, and it, they're behavioral questions. And so there is a strategy to answer these, and you're going to find these questions come up throughout the interview. Uh, and what they're really measuring is, again, your analytical skills, your response, and really kind of your ability to communicate. Uh, what a star question would be, you, you want to identify the situation. Let's talk about, you know, your, who's the worst boss you ever worked for. You want to cite a real example, talk about the situation, right? Talk about then what action you took. And then at the end, what was the result? And obviously you want the result to be positive or at least spin it to be positive. So that thought process and that way of answering questions is really gonna be important for you to practice because these are gonna come up and there's some of them are more hidden than others, but they're gonna come up throughout most interview uh, phases. And so you gotta be prepared for it. Uh, next slide. Uh, tell me about your last or your current job. Again, be prepared with a brief of an honest answer. Uh, uh, talk about, uh, you know, again, this is a, was a negative situation and how we're going to spin this positively. My last job wasn't a good fit for my skills, so I left the company, you know, or I was asked to leave the company. Again, what you learn from that. Again, even using that STAR method I talked about. Talk about the situation, be specific. General statements are not believable. So you want to be specific. You want to identify what steps you took and you want to then you know, tell them exactly what the end result was. But so the kind of softball answers that sometimes people get uh, to tough questions uh, are not only not successful, they actually are a big negative. It is, you'll be viewed as less believable than you want to be. 
And again, all this is ending it with a positive and a thoughtful conclusion. So that's really the steps. And, you know, so writing out answers to these uh, star questions. And again, my suggestion is go and, and just look it up on Google and prepare, you know, one or two sentence responses, practice them, and you'll get a lot more confident. And you won't be tripped up during an interview. Uh, interviewers know when you've practiced. And interviewers like people that have practiced because, again, it shows professionalism. And that's a good trait that they're looking for. Uh, next slide, please. Questions about your skills and accomplishments. Uh, these are kind of that hard skill side. So they may ask more detail about the hard skill side. Uh, you know, and let's face it, hard skills got you the interview, right? If your resume didn't have the A, Bs, and Cs that that position was looking for, you probably wouldn't have gotten the interview. Soft skills get you the offer, right? But so they're going to ask you more details about the hard skills because they got to make sure that you have the specific experiences and skills. And so even going through and writing down, what are your top skills? What are your best experiences? What types of accomplishments are you most proud of? Going through that process and writing that out really sometimes opens up people's eyes because I've had many clients say, well, I don't have anything I'm proud of. Well, you do. Let's, let's go back in your history, you know, it, and take a look. Well, for the last five years, I took care of my family. Well, that's something to be proud of. Let's, let's talk about that. And you get into detail about the skills and the experiences and everything that, that, was, that, uh, that took. So, uh, a sense of accomplishment and, and again, a positive uh, vibe is really is probably the, the best message I can give you. Uh, so, again, going through these exercises is hard. It does take time, but you'll be much more effective. And the end result is you may not only just get a job offer, you get multiple job offers. That's our goal as job coaches is to get you multiple offers. And in today's economy, it's not only uh, possible, it's very, very likely and much more common than it ever has been. So. That's a good thing. Uh, next slide, please. Do your skills and accomplishments set you apart from the other candidates? Again, this is when you got to take a critical look at yourself and the job description. And what do you have that matches or exceeds what they're looking for? Because that's what they're doing on their side. You know, if you're again, you're talking to a third party recruiter, he or she is going to take maybe 30 or 40 people and get it down to five or six to present to the client. And he or she wants to have the best five or six clients or candidates for that, their client so that they look good, right? Because they're selling, you know, right? They're selling. They want to make sure that they get a placement so they, they get paid. If you're talking to the actual uh, hiring manager, again, you want to separate yourself from the competition. How do you do that? You know, going above and beyond the call of duty, uh, having, again, accomplishments that really would show that you not only can do the job that they're asking for, but it would be a great long-term investment for the company because you have other things to offer. Uh, you took initiative, you're motivated, you're organized. Those are things that combine kind of the hard and soft side. And, but again, you got to cite examples. Saying that you're, I'm very organized, I'm, I'm you know, very motivated, that's all nice. But you got to tie it to something in your past that's specific and you can tell a little story around. So that's why it's important to kind of, it's almost like a script. Uh, and, it, you know, it, a, the best interview is a scripted interview that you've memorized because for that 15 or 20 minutes or 30 minutes, whatever the interview is, you are acting. And so hopefully you get the Academy Award at the end. That's what we want. Uh, next slide, please. These are these behavioral questions. I alluded to them a little bit earlier. Uh, they're gonna ask you these tough questions, you know, Tell me about a time when you made a mistake at work. So be honest, you know, everyone makes mistakes, you know. So be specific, talk about the action you took, talk about, you know, the process, and then talk about what the end result was, but be specific. And those things you gotta write down because those can be stumbling blocks and there's nothing worse than being in an interview and being at a loss for words or freezing. I mean, basically over then. So we don't want you, to, we'd rather have you freeze in practice and freeze at game time. So practice, practice, practice. Uh, next question. Uh, next slide. I talked about these stars. So again, you could look, again, look this up. Look up on the uh, uh, Google star questions, star behavioral questions, situation, task, actions, results. 
And again, you kind of got to get that in your head. If you get used to answering interview questions this way, you'll be much more effective. You won't run on. You'll not beat around the bush, as Paul alluded to earlier. You'll get to the point and you'll be viewed as a very, very quality candidate for the position. You also may find if you're looking at the job description that you're not qualified. So by doing some of this analysis and asking yourself these questions, and then when you review job opportunities, you'll find that maybe you're not a good fit. Again, we talked about 75% of the people out, 75% of resumes that hiring managers get, are, the people aren't qualified. So save yourself time, energy, and make yourself a good fit for positions that you know, you're qualified for. Our next slide, please. Why haven't I heard back? Uh, there isn't always a reason you weren't selected. Uh, you know, sometimes you can be the best candidate and not get the job. It happens. Remember, there are no perfect candidates. There's no perfect jobs. Uh, you know, if you didn't get an offer, maybe it, it just wasn't for you. You got to believe that the right place, right time, right person, those three combinations will happen. And how you can increase your odds by being in, involved in more of them. If you're trying to go one for one or one for two, I sent out you know three resumes and I didn't get a response, or I got two interviews and I didn't get an offer. You know, it's unlikely, you know, that you're going to be successful with a small, you know, just a you know small sample size like that. Uh, I just uh, placed somebody today. Uh, she has been looking for six months and she had, you know, very very slow start. She was sending out you know one application a week. And she got a couple interviews and it didn't work out. So you got to believe you got to keep plugging away and double up the effort. Once she started sending out four or five applications a week and got two or three interviews a week, a couple of things happened. First of all, she wasn't relying on one thing. So she wasn't as anxious. And when you're not as anxious, you're a better interviewer. And know what happened this week or end of last week, she got two offers. And guess what? We were able to play the offers off each other. And she got a 10% increase over the original offer and took the job today. So it does happen. This is not make believe. It does happen. Um, but you got to make sure that you're, you know, staying positive, stay with it. And there hasn't been a better time. And I've been a, a hiring manager for 40 years and I've been a job coach for three. There, there hasn't been a better time in my memory, especially over the last five to 10 years of to being in the job market. Uh, the worm has turned in employees, especially qualified employees and candidates, do have more opportunities today than they ever have. So it's a positive time. So uh, go for it. Uh, next slide. Uh, well, again, real reasons why you didn't get a job. Again, maybe you didn't prepare. So it is important to really kind of critique yourself. Um, maybe you weren't practiced. So again, practicing those interview skills. It's not a bad idea to get interviews with jobs maybe you're not that interested in. Why? It's called practice. <laughs> you know, you know, if, if, if you see a job that, and you, it looks like the perfect position for you and you think you're a great candidate and that's your first interview, you're not doing yourself uh, justice. You know, it's like going up to bat against, you know, the best pitcher in baseball and you haven't had a bad all year, you're probably going to strike out. So you, you got to prepare. So prepare with other interviews. Um, there are real reasons why people don't get it. Ageism, certainly, uh, uh, and, and racism. There's, there's real things out there that are a concern and a legitimate concern to people. Um, and some of the stuff you can change, some of the stuff you can improve on your own, some of the stuff we can't do anything about. So we just got to move on. It's like, you know what? There's a thousand other companies out there. I know I'm going to find the right position. I'm a qualified candidate. Have that positive spin and move on. Next slide, please. Uh, balance of power. I talked a little bit about this. The balance of power is finally on the employee side, at least for a short window. May not go on forever, but right now it is. Most, and again, in your research, if you're looking for positions, look for industries that are in, you know, big need for employees. You know, the pandemic was certainly a horrible situation, but believe it or not, corporate profits have never been higher this year. So there are companies making a lot of money. They 
some of the expansion that they want to do is, is being held back because they don't have enough employees. So look for those industries, uh, look for those opportunities. And those are obviously strong positions. Uh, they're, they're, and they're probably going to pay more. They will pay bonuses. They will pay, you know, uh, uh, allow uh, better terms of employment. So there's, uh, those are things that are important to you. Those are industries to do research. So that's all really part of it. By doing the right research in the industries and the companies, not only will you find better opportunities, but then again, you'll be a lot more interested in your likelihood of getting an interview and then a job offer is much higher. Uh, you know, hold each other accountable. Again, I talked about it earlier, asking for the next step or understanding and ask, what is the hiring process? Again, especially if you're talking to a third party, what is the hiring process? You screening interview, you'll talk to a, then the company HR, then you'll talk to the hiring manager. Have a good understanding of what this process is. There's nothing worse than the black hole, right? You, know, you interview, you thought it went well, you don't hear anything back for weeks or months. You know, Sometimes that can be uh, avoided, not always, but sometimes it can be avoided by asking what, process is asking where how they think you fit asking the time frame and then sending a nice follow-up letter connecting the dots make the interviewer's job easy by spelling out why you're the best candidate and why you're interested and it sounds you know something that would be automatic ask for jobs i'd be very interested in this working for this company, I would look forward to getting a job offer. There's nothing wrong, and as a matter of fact, it's very uh, advisable to finish an interview that way, especially if it's something you're excited about. Many people don't do it, They're, you know, but moving that to the next step is to your advantage and shows true interest in the position in the company. Next slide, please. Uh, I'm, I've already said it three times, we'll say it three more times. Ask for the job. You know, recap your skills and follow up communication is important. And follow up communication not only shows gratitude for their time, but it gives you another opportunity to resell how you connect to that job based on the job descriptions and the skills, experience, and duties that are in that job description. That's why it's important to read that thing inside and out and make those connections. You know, again, I've said it a few times list on paper. These are the five things they're looking for, and these are my connections. So that when you're talking, you are convinced. If you can't convince yourself that you're qualified for the job and you want to work there, you're not convincing anybody else. And again, thank them. Be grateful. They spent the time and energy. And, you know, you never know when these things come back. Yeah, I've had more than a, a few people interview and then three, six, nine months later, you know what? That opportunity, you know, was put on hold. Now we're back in the mode. Are you still interested? It happens all the time. So you want to leave on a positive note. And you obviously want to leave a good lasting impression. Next slide, please. Good luck. <laughs> uh, I don't know if there's any uh, questions or anything we can handle, but I think uh, Paul's going to run it home from here. Sure. Uh, and if uh, you know anybody's you know, listened to this and they're really interested in um, becoming a client at PRC, uh, if it's not something, uh, if you're not already a client. Uh, there's a couple of different ways to do it. So you can call the 630-682-5402 uh, number and dial extension 333. Uh, you'll be uh, given a voicemail. And uh, so if you just leave your name and number, uh, we'll call you back and get you registered for an orientation, usually within 24 hours. Uh, you know, at that point, you can just let us know what you're hoping to gain out of our program. Uh, you know, as I mentioned before, we offer one-to-one -one job coaching. You know, Jim is one of our excellent job coaches and we have... Uh, Quite a few more just like them that are, are really, really great people, and uh, really wonderful to work with. So you'd be assigned a job coach and they can help you with whatever you need. So if you just need help, you know, uh, bouncing off answers to interview questions, if you need help you know, from you know, applying for jobs or knowing what, what sites online to apply for jobs at, uh, we can help you with anything you need. Uh, it's very, very individualized. Um, if you want to learn more about what we do at People's Resource Center, you can go to peoplesrc.org. Uh, Top left-hand corner, you can go to services, select job assistance, and it'll basically give you a brief overview of some of the different services that we offer. Uh, and we'll have the um, how to get started. If you uh, prefer not to call the number, uh, there is a Google form that you can complete, and the link is uh, below on the how to get started tab. 
You click on that, it takes about five minutes to complete the Google form. It'll shoot over to us and we'll have somebody call you back again within 24 to 48 hours to set you up with an orientation. So uh, final thoughts, uh, anybody have uh, any uh, questions that we can answer? Stop the recording.